Hi, this is Rachel Burns. I'm a certified financial planner and certified divorce financial analyst. And today I want to talk about toxic generosity. Toxic generosity is when someone gives money to someone else to the extent that their own financial health is threatened, basically. And um, maybe that doesn't sound like that bad of a thing. Maybe you're thinking, oh, can someone actually be too generous? And maybe, you know, what's the worst that can happen? But what I want to get the point across today is that, yes, at some point it is, you can be too generous and it can actually be extremely harmful for your long-term financial health. And you wouldn't believe how common this is. I see more people blowing up their long-term finances because they're giving away too much money to the people that they love. I see that more than I see other potential bad things that can happen to your finances. I think I see way more people giving too much than I see people, you know, having a medical catastrophe that wipes out their finances or having, you know, having a market crash and having their investments drop in value. I think that giving away too much money is probably the most common bad thing that happens to you financially. So that's what I want to talk about today. I want to explain what exactly toxic generosity is, like at what point giving becomes toxic. I want to talk about who is most at risk for this kind of behavior. And I want to talk about why this is so damaging. So that way you can avoid this in your own finances. So first of all, um, let's get more, a little more specific about what, what amount of giving is toxic. So if you're giving more money away than you can actually afford to give, I would consider that toxic. But the problem is um, what you can afford is very subjective. So if I asked you, you know, how much cash can you afford to give away? You might think, well, you know, I'm able to pay my bills and at the end of the month I have a few hundred dollars so I could afford to give that to my kids or whatever. And I might say, well, that might seem like the case, but really you're not, you don't have enough saved for retirement. That money should be going towards retirement. Or maybe you have some debt that you're not making any progress towards paying down. And maybe I don't think that you can afford to give away the same amount that you think you can afford. So it's very, very subjective. This isn't something that there's like a dollar amount that beyond that you're in the danger zone. This is like a very subjective thing that depends on you and your finances. <clears throat> so what you can afford is not just what you have the cash for today or what you can kind of make happen today because we can all move things around. We can put things on credit cards. We can technically afford all sorts of things that we can't actually afford. But what you need to consider is what can you afford in the context of your long-term finances? So, um, are you saving for retirement? Are you paying down debt? Are you putting money towards other financial goals that you have? If you're not doing those things, then you don't technically have extra money to be giving away or doing something silly with it. Um, but it's the trouble is figuring out you know, what you're able to do. And there's a certain group of people that I see this happening with the most. And really, I mean, anyone, anyone can have toxic generosity. People give money to all sorts of people, all sorts of things for all sorts of different reasons. But what I see most commonly is moms of adult children and specifically newly single moms. So there's a reason for that. Um, I would say moms in general tend to be more prone to giving money to their kids um, because it's kind of a mom instinct to want to take care of someone else before your own needs. Like that's a mom thing. I get that. But <clears throat> I think moms and especially moms that are newly single are most likely to do it beyond the point of their abilities to the point where they're giving more than they really can. And moms that are newly single, either they've just gone through a divorce or they've lost their spouse. They've just gone through this major traumatic life event and a lot of times their financial picture has changed completely. And a, a woman in that position is often 
in a vulnerable state. Maybe she's emotionally vulnerable. She might be financially vulnerable. But often, what I see often is it's women in this situation who are so generous, specifically to their adult children, to the point where they're most likely to harm their own future by giving too much. And oftentimes it's, you know, it comes from good intentions. Oftentimes, you know, the mom feels bad because the adult children was, were impacted by the divorce or the death or whatever. Like, and a lot of times moms want to do anything that they can to make their children's lives more comfortable and easier. And so that's the point where I see the most giving happening without looking at their actual financial picture and determining, can I actually afford this? So this is where the most damaging giving is happening that I see. And <clears throat> again, you know, the, maybe she can swing it in the short term. Maybe she has a divorce settlement or maybe there's the, an inheritance that she got. And, and maybe there's enough cash in the budget to where it seems like she has extra cash. But really, when you look at the long term, maybe she doesn't have enough money to retire or she doesn't have enough money to live off of if she has a long-term caravan or whatever. There's all sorts of long-term things that you need to consider. Um, and what can happen <clears throat> is the mom can give and give and give. And at a certain point, she's not going to be able to keep giving. And I'm not talking about people that can afford to do this. I'm talking about people that can't afford to do this. At some point, it has to end because the money runs out. And what happens at that point is the kids might be used to a certain amount of support and all of a sudden it ends and then they're upset about it because after a certain amount of time, that gift doesn't really seem like a gift. It seems like something that they're kind of entitled to. And when that gifting ends, it's kind of a struggle for them to get back to their own financial reality and understand this is what things cost. This is what I can actually afford considering my income because they've gotten used to being supported by their mom. And when I say mom supporting kids, I'm not talking about extravagant gifts. I'm not talking about giving them giant sums of money. What I see most often is little bits of money here and there that don't seem like a big deal. And they, it kind of flies under the radar because it's like, oh, well, it's just, I'm just giving them a few hundred dollars a month just to make life a little bit easier for them. Or I'm keeping them on my cell phone plan or I'm keeping them on my car insurance plan. Or it's like, it's never like a giant amount of money. It's like, oh, it's just, it's just, it's just a few hundred dollars or it's just a couple thousand dollars every once in a while. They minimize it like it's not that much money. And maybe it really doesn't seem like that much money, but if that amount of money is going to your kids and it's not going towards something that needs to be addressed, like retirement savings or paying down debt, even just a little bit here and there ends up being a big shortfall at some point. And so maybe the mom doesn't realize until she's at retirement age and she doesn't have enough money to retire when she expects to or maybe she has to retire and maybe she just doesn't have as much income as she expected. You might not see the long-term effects of that until way later down the line. And at that point, it's too late. You can't go back and change what happened in the past. So unfortunately, people don't realize that they're being toxically generous until it's too late and until they're suffering the consequences. Um, and if you don't believe that this is actually a real thing and this is actually a big deal, because it does sound kind of weird, but like I have seen, I've seen this so many times in my career and it's such a problem that this is something that I feel like I need to talk about. But I want to share some examples of toxic generosity that I've seen in my career that had some major consequences. <clears throat> so the first one that I experienced was an older couple. They were in their seventies. They owned a family business and it was very, very important to them that for each of their adult children, they paid for their wedding and gave them a down payment on a home. And I think they had three kids. So within a relatively short period, they had three weddings and they had three down payments on a house, which is a, like a lot of money. And these people didn't have a lot of money. These people were business owners, small business owners. They had some retirement savings. 
they had some properties, so they felt like they had a whole bunch of money. But so what they did, <clears throat> they didn't have the cash to pay for all these gifts. They borrowed money against their properties. And so by the time I met them, they were up to their eyeballs in debt. They didn't quite have as much retirement savings as they should. And all of a sudden, both of them are in very poor health and they couldn't continue operating the business. And they still had these massive debts and were barely, you know, paying the, the minimum payments on those and trying to figure out how to stop working because they were like, he had a bunch of heart attacks and they couldn't keep the business going. So really their, their toxic generosity had put them in a situation where they weren't able to help their kids anymore for nice things like weddings or, or down payments or other gifts like that. But they also wouldn't be able to help their kids financially if the kids had like a legitimate financial emergency. And it could even get to the point where they will, they might even be financially dependent on their children because they were so generous in the earlier years that now they're probably going to be a burden on their children. And that's pro I'm sure that wasn't their intent, but that's probably not super helpful to the kids. Like if I had the choice of getting a wedding and a house down payment um, versus not having to support my parents in their older years, I would probably forego the fancy wedding, but they didn't have the choice. They just offered the help to the kids and the kids aren't going to decline that kind of help and they don't know their parents' financial situation. So that ended up being quite a tragic story. Um, another story I have is I knew a, um, I had a divorced woman who was a client of mine and she had a teenage son. And when they went through the divorce, it was this really unpleasant experience. And so she really wanted to make the kid as comfortable as possible. She really wanted to kind of make it up for the kid for the experience that the family went through. And so she wanted to put her son through college at whatever cost, you know, whatever he wants to do, he's, I'm going to pay for it. And so he chose to go to the most expensive art school in San Francisco. And she not only paid his tuition, but she paid for all of his living expenses, which in San Francisco are extraordinarily expensive. And she even like bought him a car and paid for him to park his car, which is really expensive because he got stressed out when he rode public transportation. And so she like really spent a ton of money each month for her son to have this college experience, which was very nice, I'm sure for him. Um, and the way that she was able to do this, because she was a business owner as well, um, she took out a whole bunch of debt on her business and she borrowed against her retirement funds. And this all happened before I knew her. So once I met her, she had a whole bunch of debt and was continuing to support her son financially. And even when he graduated college, he was maybe working part time after that and making a minimum wage. And so she was still she was still supporting him financially after that. And even worse. During this whole time that this is going on, she kept the house that she shared with her ex. And this house was big and expensive and she didn't want to uproot her son from the house. And so she kept the house even though she wasn't, you know, financially able to do so. And even when the son went away to college, she's like, I want to make sure that he has the house to come back to, you know, whenever he comes to visit. So not only is she paying his all of his insane college expenses, but she's maintaining this house that she can't afford because she's just trying to make life comfortable for her kid. And by the time I met her, <clears throat> she was of retirement age, but she was nowhere near being able to retire. She was tired. She was over it. Her job was exhausting and it was physically exhausting. And she had no hope of hanging it up because she had to pay off all of this debt that she incurred to put her kid through college. And her kid never became like a self-sustaining adult. And I'm not passing judgment on giving money to kids. I'm just saying she wasn't in a financial position to support him to the extent that she did. And she suffered the consequences. And I'm sure she's still suffering the consequences. Um, my last example of toxic generosity is I have a client who is a widow. And um, before her husband died, she had zero involvement in the finances. And I realized that was there was a 
a reason for that because she was a spendthrift. So her husband was intentionally keeping her separate from the finances. So when he died and she, all of a sudden she sees the family's finances, she's like, oh my gosh, I have so much money. And I'm like, hold your horses. It might seem like a lot of money, but really this needs to last you your lifetime. This hasn't been taxed yet. This isn't like, don't get too excited. And in the short time in between when I met her and when I actually started working with her and got into her finances, during that short time, she had withdrawn several hundred thousand dollars from her husband's retirement and spent it. <clears throat> and um, I was trying to make sense of like what happened to this money since I talked to you last. And um, so a lot of it went to taxes because it came from an IRA. But um, this money, she bought gifts. She, ga she gave money to her kids. She had three adult kids. She gave money to each of the kids. She, buyed a bunch of, she, buyed, she bought a bunch of gifts for her grandkids. She bought gifts for her grandkids' friends. She took them all on trips. She just gave the money away, not in a super overtly extravagant way, she just was like, oh, let me help you out with that bill that you have. And um, like one of her kids was kind of in some financial trouble. She just offered help to all these people and even people that she wasn't related to. There was like a, a family friend that she loaned money to. She just like gave all this money out and blew through a couple hundred thousand dollars in like a month. And once we were able to stop the bleeding, uh, it was kind of too late and um, that amount of money made a big difference. So now she's not going to be able to stay in her home. Her home is, is expensive ish. It's paid off, but it's still expensive, but um, she's really not going to be able to stay there because that couple of hundred thousand dollars was kind of a make or break type deal. She will, you know, she, if she would have had that money, she could have stretched it out so that she could make the, you know, pay the expenses of the house, but that's not possible anymore. And it's not possible to go back and fix that. So those are three examples just that I've seen fairly recently that I, I think are very tragic. And what's extra tragic about it is I know that each of those parents had the best of intentions and wanted to just do something nice for their children. I totally get it. I want to do nice things for my kids, but they didn't bother to find out if that was a good idea or if they were able to do that before they pulled the trigger. And um, it's, it's, it's more common than you would think. It's really, really, really common. And again, especially with women who are going through some sort of life transition like a divorce or the death of a spouse and they have adult kids. Those adult kids are the worst. So, um, what I would take away from all this is giving money away isn't bad. Giving money to the people you love is not a bad thing, but it's your responsibility to give money responsibly and to understand your own limits. And if you don't know what your limits are because you're like, well, all I know is how much money I have in my bank account. Like, I don't know how much I'm supposed to be saving for retirement or whatever. Then you can work with someone who can help you figure that out. That's not that difficult to figure out but you do need to confirm that you are able to help people before you can spread your generosity around the world. So I hope that's helpful to you. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.